how I'm just finishing sanding this edge off here. I always use circular motions when I'm sanding this bone and it leaves it nice and smooth. I just want to get rid of that ridge that's on there. That's beautiful there now. And that's ready for carving now. With carving on short sides, I just use freehand with the scalpel blade. I just line up the lines where I want to do and I just run it along. Just randomly. This one is too coarse, so I've got to bring that down. Extra lines. Sometimes I've got to make them a little bit deeper. I just go with the back edge of the scalpel and it deepens the cut a little bit at the uh, joint of the rock work. And that's the pillar up to there. And if we look at the picture, you notice there's another section down here like a retaining wall a wing wall that comes out down so we just run the scalpel down there to make that definition and we carry these lines all the way around the corner here for the block work we'll come up a bit closer now and what we do, we start and we put the joints every second one. We just put a joint like that on every second one. Which indicates the sort of block. Individualize the block work. And that's all good. And then we come around the corner here. Now, when you go around the corner, around the corner here, if you've got a short one here, uh, there, you've got to have a longer one this side. And so you go back this way like this. That sort of randoms. Randoms the block work and after when it's painted it'll come out now I'll see if I can bring it a bit closer you can see and we're around the corner there now this area here we just make individual blocks you can do some lines but if you notice on the photo here the block work is up and down, random, all over the place. So it's just freehand work along here. But if it was work like this, block work like this all the way along, you'd get a ruler possibly and just run along with the ruler. But I will just do this individual stones. I'll just do random up and down lines. Just some random up and down lines. And then we've got to make individual sort of blocks. It's very easy to work with. And you don't have to be exact in anything. You just keep on working along. And I'll come back to you later. It's now 
yeah, this section here hides the point motor. Point motor goes in under there, and you've got to have access to the point motor at all times, just in case a sticking situation happens. Doesn't happen very often, but occasionally you might have to. So that will just sit into that position there. And that's the wing wall on the right hand side. And if you move over this side here, I will put another wing wall in this area here somewhere. And we'll have the water tank in between this section here. Before the actual wing wall, I've got us another piece of scrap foam. I'll keep all these pieces of foam because uh, I fill them in and use them somewhere or other on the layout. And I'll, that sort of suits the wing wall there and I'll carve that to suit as well. Painting the rock walls, these rock walls. Take a bit of black. Oh, I need a tube. Just put a bit in there, a bit more. And a little bit more grey, just like that. Then we put a little bit of water with it as well. And we just mix all that up. We have a fairly thin mix of paint. This is only the first coat, so I usually put a fairly dark coat on. This is coming on a bit too dark for me. I'll have to put more grey in it. Yeah, that's way too... You give it a good heavy coat got to put more, more grey in it. I think I'll put a bit of white in it too to lighten it up. A bit of white. It's a warm white. A warm white. it up again that's more the color that we need dark very dark slate I want slate color we'll get a bit more water and put into it there so it goes right into the joints if you don't put that extra bit of water in it sometimes doesn't soak right into the joints So you put a very liberal coat over for a start. This paint also strengthens the foam quite a lot. A bit more water onto that. There's a lot of paint on on the first coat. A lot of this does soak straight into the foam. Paint around the base as well, because that strengthens it up later on. <coughs> there 
should be able to see that taking shape basically with the, all the grooves and that will soak in more. I'll put that out in the sun or you just got to wait longer if you don't put it in the sun. It's got to be dry before you do any more and I'll do the other wing walls as well. Just a matter of getting a nice even coat over the whole lot, fairly liberal. And make sure it, a little bit of that water as well to make sure it goes into deeper joints. That's that one ready, and the last one. pieces when they're finished will basically complete the rock wall section that we're modeling on that photograph now this section here later on which is there I'll put a much lighter color on because it's not sl not slate and that um, that's different stone to slate. That's a, another rock stone. Sandstone or something. Or granite. Not sure exactly what it is, but I'll just make that different. So that part will be different to the wing walls. Now I'm highlighting some of the bricks of the blocks. Um, put some with a little bit of uh, light umber on, and then I'm going to do some more with some grey. Just, just randomly around. Remembering that when you do a corner one, it's got to go around the full part of the corner to, to do the whole block. That one there didn't have a... I missed out a... Eh? Let's put another one in there. And this adds to the realism later on when uh, the layout's finished with all the weathering and that. I also dry brush some of this as well later on with some lighter colours. But at this stage, this just adds to more realism at the moment by doing it this way. Keeping in mind, the top of the, the parapet is always lighter than the others too, so I usually put a, a slightly lighter colour at the very top to add to the realism. So that's just giving a variation now. I think you can see that fairly good. Just repeat that with all the all the pieces that you're putting together. This is the top of the one here. So put some very light ones on the top. And then I'll put a few lighter ones as well. Just I mean a little bit darker. So you can get a bit of the dark.
do it rather randomly. There's no set pattern to whatever you do. Just remember the corner ones you've got to go make sure you go around. Get most of the paint off first, and then we'll just brings out the texture on the top of the foam. Now we need more on the joints, uh, on the corners I should say, not on the joints, on the corners. Same down this side here, just to highlight, highlight the retaining wall. sort of brings it to life I feel we can put some other chalks and that over as well later on now this side here have got to be a little bit lighter so it'll be a little bit heavier dry brushing oh, first of all I want to dry brush some brown into this other on this side where the rock stones are, I just want to put a bit of random all over the place. Just adds a little bit extra colour after the we dry brush later. Too heavy there. Bit of paper that can blot off. I've masked the section up of this one to spray it lighter. I'm going to use some of this Gavara Hobby paint. 